So although I hope to get back to doing some more reviews with this channel, unless I get some cameras or equipment sent from uh, some manufacturers, hint, hint, um, the amount of reviews I'll be doing will be few and far between, which is totally cool. This opens the door for me to continue some of my um, content uh, around my Fujifilm gear. And with this video, I'm launching a new one, which is all about the images you can capture and create straight out of camera. So the straight out of camera is the whole theme. Um, it's a very common theme and something you'll see a lot with Fuji users because the awesome JPEGs that these cameras create. So I think what I'll do with each one of these episodes of the straight out of camera series, I'll talk about one photo trip I did and the film simulations or settings uh, that I use for that trip. Uh, for this episode, it uh, this is with my X-T1 and a sh very short uh, photo walk in downtown area of Las Vegas. And the film simulation I used was a custom one that uh, I created just using some of the settings. If you know the uh, idea of Fujifilm recipes, then you've probably tried a few of these already. This one is just one I made up, a black and white one. Um, I'm going to give it a name and I'll put the settings for this simulation in the description below. I'll also put this on my blog so you can find the settings either way. Uh, and I'll keep creating more and sharing more, kind of like uh, the Fuji Weekly blog guy does, um, as I find settings that work really well for me. So I am going to do a screen share situation in this video so I can just talk about some of the, the images I created. I have like 93 in this little folder. Um, I'm going to rock through them real quick, It just give you an idea of the vibe of these images. And then I'll put a few of them up, uh, a few of the select ones up on the blog with the recipe. And you can uh, try, try out the, this black and white setting for yourself. What I found is that even though the Acros simulation isn't built into the X-T1, um, with tweaks such as this, I get a really similar vibe as I get from Acros simulation or even the Acros film. Um, where the tonality range feels very, very similar. Um, I don't usually shoot acros for serious grain anyways, so the lack of a grain setting in the X-T1 is not a huge deal in this specific situation. But it's also one of those things where if you capture the image in terms of the uh, tone and exposure and you want to add grain, you can always do that in post. So let's rock through some of the images and I'll talk more about the simulation on the back end of this. So like I said, I have 93 of these images, so I'm not gonna have time to really stop for each one. Uh, this is like basically me showing you a unfiltered fo uh, folder. This is me not uh, eliminating any for selects. This is, this is before that process. So it's almost like I'm doing it here live with you. This is one of those photo trips where I realized I probably didn't get a ton, if any, pictures that would be print worthy in and of themselves. What I hope to get out of a photo trip like this is images to contribute to a bigger project, something that has a consistent vibe or theme. And uh, since I shoot a lot of random city shots of Las Vegas and the Las Vegas area, I have a, a couple subcategories, sub themes that I'm gonna be making uh, photo books and photo projects from. So if I'm out just shooting, finding cool things things with cool vibe, cool look, cool geometry, cool contrast, and just capture what I think is really neat in the moment. Usually that those will find a way to filter into a project. As you can see, the, the, the stratosphere of Las Vegas is a very common photo subject for me. I just think it's a cool, one of the very cool buildings in our valley. And then these are from the downtown area of Las Vegas, which over the past, i say 10 to 15 years, has just changed dramatically on a constant basis. This is all midday, so the sun is pretty harsh. This is the type of light that a lot of people say, you know, it's, it's not the best light, it's not what you advise to do. Um, go early morning, go evening, which is totally true especially if you're shooting color, you get the best color, the best light, just you give yourself a lot of uh, creative choices when you don't have the sun 
right above your head. Uh, that being said, shooting black and white and shooting in a area where there's a lot of buildings and things to create shadows, objects to, to hide the sun, are some of the best ways to work with that midday sun, is to uh, find ways to create that contrast, to create those shadows. Uh, another thing I was hoping to do with some of these shots was to find situations where I could uh, have, ha have some good tonality and detail. So I found some of these little close-up elements like this lock here and this chain where I wanted to see uh, wanted to see what the X-T1 could do. The 35mm F2, I'm still really enjoying that lens. So I loved to, uh, really love to push the qualities, of the, to push the limits of that lens in terms of uh, its uh, focusing distance, it's the detail it creates and all that. Here's a neon sign in downtown Las Vegas. I love the way neon looks in black and white. This is a close-up of a sign or a lighted sign in the downtown area that um, had like a semi like a plexiglass type cover and it wasn't clean so it had this the, but the the dirt on it was kind of creating a cool a cool texture and I was playing around with the reflections of the environment behind me on that glass and I thought it was pretty cool some of these would probably fit into a project but you can see there I have like 10 of that same subject I'm only going to pick probably one or two some of these street scenes, um, they were pretty hit or miss for me. I wasn't nailing focus as much as I would like on these shots where I wasn't looking through the eyepiece when I was kind of trying to do a, a, a discrete type street style shooting. So some of the ones with people, I didn't nail focus a lot. And this is those lights are another example of just some, some other details I'd like to, to grab on these type of shoots. I also like to find uh, cool textures on walls and buildings and streets and just all kinds of things that help add to the whole. There's always a tendency to grab really cool wide shots and that helps sets the scene. And then these detail shots help add to the mood and add to the vibe and really round out a story of the, of the environment, so to speak. This little setting is a really good example of what I was hoping to achieve on this day, shots like this with this vibe. So it has some really harsh shadows, and um, but yet some cool geometry, some cool texture. So this was the in my mind this was like the the, the perfect situation. That the purpose what I why I made this uh, this black and white film simulation recipe was to try it out on situations like this, and I think it came out pretty cool. This one, if I maybe crop a little bit, or maybe if it goes into a project, is probably one of my is the best shot with a person in this set on this on this trip. The the light is uh, hitting some trees or parts of buildings and creating some interesting shadows, and the light falling on that guy as he walks by is pretty cool. But to be honest, most of my people shots in this day failed. They really didn't work. This building's really cool. So there's some really, really cool environment and city, uh, city vibe type stuff that could fit into a bigger project. But here's an example of me missing focus a couple times. This wouldn't have been too bad if I nailed focus. Still my work. We'll see. This guy was really cool looking, and I missed the framing on this shot. Focus is close enough that it could work in that regard, but the framing is just doesn't work for me, I don't think, unless I crop it. But I played around with the raw file on this one and recovered a lot of those highlights over there. So that was very interesting. It's another example of the broad dynamic range X-T1 has. Here are some shots that I was just playing around with a silhouette of a tree and a bird sitting in a tree. Here's some birds on the ground right below that tree. Caught this one in motion, but again, my framing is a little off. So stuff where I tried to, was working real quick. I didn't nail, nail a ton, but some of these ones where I was able to frame and frame some buildings in or parts of buildings in, I think worked out pretty well. And some of these scenes I've shot before on film, so it's always cool for me to compare how they look on certain film stocks with my digital cameras. Like this photo with this wall and this pipes doesn't really do much on its own, but I think could contribute to a photo book 
placed in the right scenario and it adds to the vibe of this downtown location that I'm showing you. El Cortez, if you've seen my stuff, I shoot El Cortez a lot. El Cortez is one of those buildings in downtown Las Vegas and Las Vegas in general, especially that main building. It's persisted. It's been around for a long time and that's a very rare in our city where something new is built, the old is taken down and things move on. And this is a detail of El Cortez. Um, the, the handles on the door, I just think, had really cool texture. And I got a few of those, and we'll see which one works later on in more detail. But like I said, even though this doesn't have any people in it, a lot of my shots don't have people in it when I go out. I, I'm, I just really like shooting environment scenes, um, small details of the city, of architecture, of buildings, especially in Las Vegas where I shoot something today and literally in a month from now it could be gone. Uh, so this is this is probably the shot that epitomizes what I had in my head when I set out that day to get some shots. So I was cool. I was so I was happy to get at least a few of a few shots that had this feel to it. And I'm going to keep keep going out and shooting more. So with this film simulation, I'll be able to have a consistent look to this with my XT1. And I'll have to see how close this is to the um, built-in simulations on my XH1 if I mix, if I mix, end up mixing cameras for, for some of these city scene photo book projects. So all that was shot with this, the X-T1, um, with a custom film simulation that uh, I have the custom simulations queued up to the front button here. I press it, and then I select the one I want. This one I put on number six. I think on number seven I have classic chrome with just a couple tweaks. Number six I have this custom black and white one, which again I'll put the settings in the description, so you can feel free to copy and paste and or and copy them into your camera and see how it works for you. And I'll also put it on my blog for future reference. Um, but the but, but shooting with these JPEGs, I mean, I, I shoot RAW and JPEG. I think having the capability to edit the RAW file is essential. I don't think I would ever shoot just JPEG unless I'm in a punt, uh, unless I'm in a crunch for uh, file space on 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 a SD card. But uh, but the JPEGs out of these cameras are great, and the capability to adjust some of these custom settings. And kick out different J different style of JPEGs all in the same card is really really cool in, a, in a, an efficient way that is. Other cameras have custom settings, but um, to, for me to be able to hit that front button, basically change the set the selection of custom settings that I set up is really really cool. So I'm just scratching the surface of what I'm going to do with that aspect of this camera. The quality of these JPEGs are totally printable. Um, that's one purpose for them. Obviously, they're great for Instagram, especially if you have the app and you connect your camera to your uh, phone real quick. You can take the pictures from your phone, from your camera to your phone, really, really conveniently, and have them up on Instagram in no time. That's a huge. Fe that's a huge uh, feature of this camera that I really enjoy. The other really cool purpose of these JPEGs for me is that you using a setting like this. And going out in a situation like this and coming back and looking through this JPEGs, even if I'd never used actual JPEGs for a project, let's say, they're great, great rough drafts. They're great sketches, so to speak, of what I might want the final image to look like. So they're really, really good starting points, really good inspiration and guidelines to where I might go with the, with the edit. Um, and that's a great, great purpose for them and something uh, I guess was always subconsciously there when I would just shoot JPEGs and RAW, but creating this custom setting, going out and shooting, and as I'm looking through it, it really gets your mind going and, and gets you thinking about different ways and styles to edit photos. Maybe pushes you to a certain extreme or pulls you back in certain areas that you may not have thought of by default, but seeing your own images that you created presented to you in a way that you maybe didn't think about um, in the first place is really, really cool and really useful. Um, so that's it for now. I want to keep these videos uh, fairly short from here on out. This one was a little long, but um, so this is the first straight out of camera episode with my X-T1. I'll do some with my X-H1. I'll bounce between those two cameras, and if I ever get another Fuji, I'll do that one as well. 
but let me know if there is a Fujifilm simulation recipe you want me to try. If there's one that, that you can't find somewhere else that maybe you want to see if I can create to mimic a certain look and certain style, I'll let me know and I'll try to do that and, and test that out as well. So that's it for now. I'm going to create some more of these settings for my X-T1 and X-H1 and go out and shoot some more. And I hope you're shooting as well. So that's it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And I'll talk to you soon.